Biloxi blues that happens every night And I ain't never met a riverboat dealer that could ever be a friend of mine They all liars Summer heat never treats me kind It leaves trouble on my mind I would take a steady dose of summer heat right now well putting in my notice And I'll see you at another time This highway does not know my name And I don't care, no, I don't care Listen to the hook right here. Just a white line gypsy getting out of Mississippi with just enough gas to get there. Low. Budget. Live, not so live, and welcome all you low lifers and all you new listeners and new viewers and whatnots. But if you've been here a while, you're a low lifer. You're a low lifer. That is my song. From the album, 64, that is Luke Duncan, Biloxi Blues. And you have found yourself here in the low-budget live bar and grill for a low-budget live, not-so-live. One of the last low-budget live, not-so-lives. I think we got one more. Between now and the Bassmaster Classic, when we will all join together and do low-budget live, live. From the black market Bar and Grill, Birmingham, Alabama, the Five Points South location. Been getting some questions on that. We're going to throw down. But if you want to hear this crazy podcast live, we're going to have some fun guests. Uh, Stupid Darian's going to be there. Big C's going to be there. We're going to end the FAC there, the Fat Ass Challenge. We're going to end it there with a weigh-in for five high dollars that night. And then after, after low-budget Live, live. We're going to throw down some tunes. We're going we're gonna to play. I got my man Shannon Wheeler coming on the fiddle. My man Andy Abernathy coming on that old guitar. My man Jacob Reynolds coming on that old guitar. And we're going to throw down some Luke Duncan tunes as well, some covers. We're going to have a good time. The Black Market Bar and Grill, March 7th, kicks off at 8 p.m. Bassmaster Classic. It's already the biggest tournament going on. Now you got some low budget live, live there. You, you need to be there. You need to be there. Where I need to be right now is some some warmer weather. Uh, woke up to a cold dang Tennessee this 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 morning, like twenty degrees. I'm over it. I'm over it. And uh, of course, this is the podcast for February twenty fourth, two thousand twenty. And what do you expect, February in Tennessee? You know, I don't know what I'm what I'm thinking, but we did have a couple sixty degree days this week, and uh, this sucks. This sucks. This cold, but. But I am going to remedy the situation Sunday evening. I'm leaving. I'm driving south. I'm southbound, mama. It's an old Almond Brothers song. If you don't know it, you need to look it up. But I'm southbound. I'm headed to the wonderful Sunshine State where I feel like uh, 90% of bass fishing pros are right now. A lot of them. No, not 90 Half of them, however you want to look at it, because the Elite Series guys aren't down there. They're on they're on recess right now, waiting on that classic. They start practicing next weekend for the classic up there on Gunnersville. But uh, you got the FLW Pro Circuit, formerly known as the FLW Tour. You've got that down there at the Harris Chain of Lakes right now. And uh, then you got the Bass Pro Tour kicking off down in Okeechobee. And as I record this, it's actually Friday. Y'all are going to hear this on Monday. Um, but I'm traveling Sunday. I'm traveling to the great state of flow, Rada, and I'm going to be meeting up with the one and only Tanner Lines, editor, cameraman extraordinaire for the Traveling Circus and Boats and Pros. We'll get to that in a minute. Picking him up. He's down there with John Hunter right now. Make sure you're following John Hunter. Um, subscribe to his YouTube channel. Tanner's throwing some great stuff out for John, covering his uh, FLW Pro Circuit career. And picking him up. Picking him up in Leesburg, Florida. And we're going fishing. We're going to fish. Uh, we're going to film and fish. And so Monday, got a little sneaky like we're going to. Then we're headed down to meet up with the big boy, Carter Andrews, my man Carter, uh, 
and and a couple of Carter's friends, and we're going to embark on an adventure. And uh, I've borrowed a boat from my dad, Marty D. So thanks to Marty D for that. And I'm dragging it down there, and I'm going to go down from like Monday to Thursday. Couldn't pull an all-weeker, but uh, going to go get in some warmer temps, hopefully some bedding fish, hopefully some big fish. So you're going to want to check the channel for all that goodness. We're going to film a traveling circle. We're going to cir- cir- travel and circle. That would get tiring. You just you just never stop. We're going to film a traveling circus. We're going to film uh, a lot of vlog stuff. So a lot of content coming from this week. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel Lots of goodness coming. Hopefully some big old fat bass. I sure hope. I sure hope. Uh, You know what else is in Florida? You know what else is in Florida? Startron. Starbright. Bringing you low budget life. The fine folks at Startron and Starbright. They're going to be a big part of low budget live live. Talk to them this week and I can't wait. We're going to be giving some, some, some goodies out. Going to be giving some goodies out during the low budget live live. Make sure you're there, of course. But uh, the fine folks at Star Trine bringing you low budget live for a long time since a, before a lot of you were low lifers. They've been supporting me. They supported me on the FLW tour. Now they support uh, the low budget lifestyle. And uh, those guys make a lot of great products from the Starbright cleaning products to the Star Trine ethanol fuel treatment that will kick ethanol right in the teeth. Whether it's your weed eater, whether it's your lawnmower, whether it's your chainsaw, whether it's your truck, your outboard motor, ethanol. Is no bueno. Startron's fueling your adventures. Get you some Startron. Take care of the people that support the things you enjoy. And these folks support a lot of pro fishermen, a lot of tournament trails, uh, and low budget life. So thank you to Startron. Thank you to Startron. As I as I mentioned, that FAC, yeah, you know me, will be going down. March 7th, March 7th, we will be doing the final weigh-in. And I think I, I, I think I got Big C. Uh, I think I got him. I weighed this morning, and on my scales, and it just depends on, uh, you know, I, 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 even, I even put a little weight on there, 15-pound weight, to check it out. And it shows it at 15.5 on these scales. So a half pound heavy, right? And right now today, from when I weighed in this in the low budget live barn grill, I'm down 27 pounds. Excuse me. I think I did the wrong math on that. 23 pounds. <laughs> I went to county school. 23 pounds. I'm down 23 pounds, fat assers. I hope y'all are still hanging with it. I need some updates. I need some updates. All of you, you listeners out there, putting together some things for you, putting together some things. So keep after it. Uh, the weather has sucked. I'm not a member of a gym, so I like to go hike. I like to run outside. I like to exercise outside. And the weather has sucked in the last week, so I, I haven't exercised in a week. But uh, just kind of really watch what I ate the last week, but I was down a couple more pounds, three pounds. So like 23 pounds, man. I'm so, I feel so freaking good. Uh, I can tell a difference. And I hope, I hope you guys um, are telling a difference in yourselves out there. Um, just because we go end the fat ass challenge in a couple of weeks, doesn't mean it ends. We're going to keep it going, make it a life style. And uh, I want 180. That's my goal. I want to get to 180 um, and just get back to just fighting shape. You know, you can't be a little scrappy dog and not be in fighting shape. I, I'm on here just throwing things out there all the time. I'm throwing things out the, out here just, you know, uh, slandering folks and, and, and getting in fights with tournament organizations. You, you got to be a scrappy dog. You got to be a scrappy dog. So I, I got to get back to fighting shape. So we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Y'all know I'm scrappy. Even when I'm chubby, I'm scrappy. <laughs> Even when I'm husky, I, I'm, I'm scrappy. Uh, nothing to fight about this week, though. Daggummit. I know y'all are let down. I uh, want to say a huge thank y'all. Boats and Pros, the Jordan Lee episode. You guys appear to be liking it. It's only been out a day. Keep on watching it. If you haven't seen it, make sure you watch it. Make sure you leave me a comment, and uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We're going to do 10 more of these Boats and Pros and filming another one the week of the Classic with Mr. Jason Christie, not the other one. Jason Christie with an IE, not the hard Y. Remember, IE, Jason Christie, the real one, 
the one that the one that you know is a professional angler, not the other guy, whatever he does. And all y'all, I appreciate y'all sending me his tournament results. It's almost like you don't even have to send them to me. I know what they're going to be before they're even printed. <laughs> it's just, it's insane. I think, I think my man ain't got no hooks. That's what I think. I think, I think that's the problem. I think he ain't got no hook sponsor. He needed to sell him a hook sponsor, and then, and then maybe catch a bass. You know, and then maybe catch a bass. I don't know. Maybe he sleeps in. Maybe he takes naps. I don't know. I don't know, but uh, just just out there, just just getting it done, just out there getting it done uh, on that FLW Pro Circuit. Uh, we are going to jump right in today. I'm going to go ahead and text our guest right now, and I'm super pumped about this. Uh, this is this is a good buddy of mine. I'm very proud to call him a good buddy, and it's somebody that everybody in the sport looks up to. Uh, they are either in awe of him, they're either getting beat by him, or they are um, jealous of him. <laughs> and I've been knowing this guy for several years now, and he is without a doubt one of the greatest fishermen of all time, if not the greatest of all time. Uh, in the last seven years, run through a couple of these stat lines before he gets on here, but in the last seven years, he has more top tens in the sport of professional bass fishing than anybody, than anybody. And the only man that's in second place in this category is Jacob Wheeler. Jacob Wheeler's close. Jacob Wheeler's close. Uh, I have... Fished against him. I fished with him. I've seen him on the water. I've seen what the man can do. Y'all have seen him in the standings. Uh, he is absolutely incredible. He has 12 wins. He has won the Forest Wood Cup. He has won Angler of the Year on the FLW Tour. He is Brian Thrift. And we're going to get my man on the phone right now. See what happens. What's up? Brian Thrift. How are you, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing good. So doing good. So y'all, I want to say I, I shot Brian a text. He is at y'all are gonna hear this on Monday, but it's the off day at the BPT where Brian's new home. He's fishing Bass Pro Tour this year, and he's already said, Hey guys, guess what? I'm here. I'm here. Last <laughs> last tournament, he was catching them up and uh he graciously decided to come on, and dude, I know what are you what are you doing right now? Sitting there working on tackle? What are you doing? I am. I'm working on tackle right now. I'm in Group B, so my first day is uh, Saturday, so I have the day off to get everything ready. Are you, were, when you uh, got that schedule and you got that alignment uh, assignment that you're going out on Saturday, and then you saw the forecast for those 40 mile an hour winds today, <laughs> were you like, "Yep, <laughs> I'm glad I'm in Group B." <laughs> I think it's supposed to blow pretty good tomorrow. Is it? Uh, Ugh. Yeah, and then it's going to be the second day of the cold front. So be tough. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be different. It's going to change things up. I, I don't know. I just I don't jive very well with Okeechobee's. We got a love hate relationship together. I don't know what's going to happen. And, but that's the good thing about this lake is. You never know what's going to happen. <laughs> that's a, that's just Florida in general, though. You know what I mean? That's I just agree. you don't know, you see these guys in the in the five fish tournaments a lot of times that you and I have fished, and you fish a lot more than than I have. But you see a guy lay a big stringer up, and then they'll kind of limp. You know what I mean? You got like one big day. Florida's this mythical place to a lot of anglers, but really, it's kind of a tough place to fish. It, it really is. You know, I'm I've always said that. I mean, for lack of a better way to put it Okeechobee is probably the most overrated lake in the country for sure <laughs> I would agree with that a lot of times I would agree do you think that's grass lakes though because I feel like Gunnersville can be the most overrated lake in the country sometimes too just because if you're off by an inch you're off by a mile on some of those yeah but places. at Gunnersville you got other options you that's true you have other options on Okeechobee yeah you so it's kind of that's true you got that's true. what you got and 
that's all you got. <laughs> yeah, you you ain't gonna be you ain't gonna be out there finding much in the dead middle, you know. <laughs> it, no, it's like no. you, you can't go, hey, I'm gonna go through a blah 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 over here. You just you just kind of got to do. There ain't but about five things you do, you know. Well, yeah. so so your practice, you text me that it was awful. So I got documentation <laughs> right here on the podcast. He said it was awful. So when he's in the top ten next week, y'all give him a hard time. <laughs> so it was a bad. It was a rough practice. It, it was for me. I always struggle down here. This, I mean, this week was no different. And just, I don't know. I just can't get it together here. And I'm just gonna go fishing and see what happens. I mean, the good thing about Lake Okeechobee is you can't get lucky. You just get a couple of random big bites. Be right there. Can the go a long it way. Like, yeah, it looks like you had a great day, but really you got three. Four <laughs> exactly right. I think my rookie day on the first day I ever fished the tour as a pro, I caught a seven pounder with like thirty minutes to go, and I think it gave me thirteen pounds. And I was like thirtieth, yeah. and I'm like, and everybody's like, "Well, you had a pretty good day." I'm like, "No, I had one good cast <laughs> today. Yeah, exactly. I had one good cast. I caught a bunch of rats, and I caught a seven pounder, and you know, and then the second day ended up missing a check by a pound because I couldn't catch that seven pounder again. You know, <laughs> that's how that's how it goes. Uh, so. You're out there. Do you, how many times? Because you, you're you're super organized. You're a bait junkie. How many times do you get your tackle ready? Did you did you mess with it at all last night? Or are you just doing it all today? How many times um, do you redo things? Do you ever second I, guess yourself? Oh yeah, I second guess myself a lot. <laughs> I uh, I started on it this morning. You know, we got all day today. So. So you just you just working on tackle today and sitting there bundled up in, in Florida. Uh, yeah. Well, so I think the biggest question mark coming into this year, because I've known you for a long time, everybody in the sport's known you a long time, you are one of the most consistent guys of all time, most top tens in the last seven years, 12 wins. You finally got that cup that had been running away from you. You won rookie of the year. You've got an angler of the year. What what did you think about your first Bass Pro Tour? I mean, as far as the score tracker and as far as just the format, I mean, obviously you kicked butt uh, until, and I will say, until that Wheeler guy found that one spot. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> because I'll be honest, the announcers and myself, I'm watching it and I'm like, well, Thrifty just won him another hundred on. Uh, and then all of a sudden, Jacob's like, it, it was dumb. It was it was really impressive to watch how quick it turned because oh, yeah. you didn't have a lot of time left. But what did you think overall the experience, man? Did you, I mean, do you like the format? Did it get in your head at all? I, I do like the format. It's, it's one of those formats that you can't ever get comfortable in. It's kind of like in a traditional five fish tournament, you, you kind of got an idea of what your goal weight is mm -hmm. once you get there. You're kind of you're comfortable. You can you're breathe a little bit. Yeah, you can breathe a little bit. The day just like a sigh of relief, and you can go practice, try to find something for the next day. It's it's hard to do that in this format because really no lead is safe because the all the guys if you're out front, all the guys you know behind you, like you've got guys that are below the cut that know they've got to make a drastic change if they're going to catch up. So you. You see that a lot more, a lot more of those drastic changes and just guys scrambling, like going, just, you know, going for broke. Like, I've got to go abandon everything I've done and do something else if oh, I'm yeah. going to make this up. So, well, I think when you call, I think it was like a 511, you call on that stretch of docks and Marty and JT and then they're going, well, you know, Mr. Thrift, here you go. You know, we're introducing <laughs> Mr. Thrift to the Major League Fishing crowd. And, I was the same way, and then Jacob just – what was going through your head when he went on that run? I think he caught like nine in ten minutes or something stupid. Yeah. And, I uh, mean, are you just – I mean, are you just getting a sinking feeling? I mean, what's what's going through your head? No, I, I'm not getting a sinking feeling, but I know that, you know, I've got to change because I can't catch them quick enough doing right. what I'm doing. Right. I've got to do something different to, to try to be able to compete with that, and I just – I never found that school of fish like jacob found that's now you and you had but been it, catching them offshore a lot during the week and then you changed up to the bank there at least from what i got to see you changed yes, up to the docks exactly late that right. day that's what i did the pretty much the whole event was where the first three days was fish offshore and then 
the last day where I was catching them kind of I couldn't get bit I caught four or five quick and then I couldn't get any bites so that's kind of what had me scrambling and ended up on that dock pattern well I think people don't realize this about you and and as much but you are to me and I've always give you a hard time about it but you're as good with your electronics as anybody's ever been, in my opinion. I, I really believe yeah. that. <laughs> oh, I, I do, man. And and I, and you're a humble dude. You'll never take credit for that. But I think you rely on your electronics because a lot of people think Brian Thrift Chatterbait, Brian Thrift Skipping Jigs under docks. <laughs> you're a Lake Norman guy. But, dude, you, you do work, you know. And you, I've watched you in practice. You know, I've seen you just – you put in your time finding those, and you've described them to me as one-cast spots. And they're hard to find, but you, they, you look they for those. Hard to find. I, I really do. I mean, that's what I pretty much devote my whole practice to because that's the stuff that's hard to find that you've got to put time in to find it. And so I'll, you know, I'll spend a lot of time staring at my hummingbirds trying to find you know, those one cast places where you can find a group of fish because, listen, I mean, at this point in the game, it, it may not equate to a, a good finish but i know how to fish the bank if right absolutely find, uh, if i don't find any of like a group of fish or something like that i can always just go fish the bank during the term and when you go practice the bank and this is what i've been guilty of a lot i mean you're shaking fish off but but fishing the bank you need to fish the moment i guess what i'm trying to say so if you practice the bank I mean, it makes it makes total sense. If you practice the bank, it could change. So you could you spend your time looking for a just a uh, a money spot, so to speak. And then if it don't work out, then you just go fishing and you fish the day. You fish the conditions, and dude, you right. you do it as well as anybody. When you're looking at your graph, do you when you find that cat one cast spot, do you know it just by looking at the graph? Um, not you, always, but. A lot of times, yes. Just I mean, sitting in a driver's seat, you're like, uh huh, uh huh. I got you boys yeah. this week. <laughs> <laughs> it's rarely like that. There's been a time or two, but usually it's you got to, you still got to figure out what they want, how they're positioned, the right angle and stuff. Right. That's that's awesome, man. I, I think that that's that's something that's always intrigued me about you. Uh, that and your love, and I had your little buddy Brian New on after he his big open win, and we talked about this a little bit. You're a bait junkie, and I don't think people realize how much so. <laughs> you and New, I mean, what, what? You just love lures, don't you? I do. And I, and I, I mean, really you, you've got it's a lot of great sweat. sponsors, but you're like, you just like trying cool stuff, stuff that's new, stuff that, I mean, you, you go through some stuff. I, I really do, and I kind of equate it to, you know, a mechanic or somebody like that. There's no one tool that does everything especially in bass fishing i mean you've got to have everything and there's no way one company can make the best bait in every category that's it's right impossible. that's right I, I agree with that so gagley already told me one time years ago and i loved this you, we were going somewhere on tour and you had bought you were telling him about some bait you had bought and and you were like yeah i ordered like nine of them and he's like well you've never even thrown it and he said, "But what if they bought it? <laughs> yeah. Do you are you an over are you, are you an over buyer though? You buy oh, multiples. Yeah, I wasted so much money on that. <laughs> That's like my biggest fear in fishing is being out there and not have something I need. <laughs> I'm that way too, man. I'm. I mean, I am a. It's I'll a. T- I'll tell you how bad it is, Luke. Like now <laughs> when I'm fishing the major league fishing and I don't use my live wells. I've plugged the live wells off in my Ranger, and I have plastic totes in my live wells. <laughs> yes, dude. That's a low-budget live exclusive right there. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I, dude, there's never enough room in a boat, and our Ranger's got a lot of room, but there's never enough dang. room for all the dang tackle that I want to bring, dude. Mine right. rarely float. And, and yeah, I am – so No, I'm like that. I'm like uh, – I'm not as crazy as I ain't going to buy 10 or something, but I'm going to buy four or something. <laughs> Yeah, so I've said for years we need caddies like golf. No doubt. Another boat to follow us around just to carry tackle. Dude, I'm telling you, <laughs> I've said like the marshals and boat officials, which y'all's boat officials got a job to do, weighing fish, and y'all keep them busy. But my thing is, hey, uh, 
seven six flipping stick, please. You know, what, what would yeah, you suggest exactly. here? <laughs> big weight, Duncan. Throw big weight. All right, thank you, thank you, I, <laughs> sir. I would, I would go with the chatterbait here. Thank you. Now, hand me that uh, seven seven meat, foot medium, please. Thank you. Yeah, I think. I mean, just a guy to tie on some tie some Palomar knots, man. I I'm, I think that's where. I mean, Major League Fishing has tried to change the game. That's just the next thing, man. They went away from entry fees. Let's let's get to some. Let's get. They got this variable weight. Boyd compared it to the PGA. Let's get some caddies out there for Brian Thrift. <laughs> Talking to you, Boyd. Get Brian Thrift to Dan Caddy. I like it, dude. That's that's hilarious. So, when you order, I mean, you you stop. You're a tackle store junkie too. I know that. Oh, yeah. You stopping at tackle stores and pilfering through. If you see a crankbait, on average, just I'll just throw a crankbait out there. How many of them are you buying if you just think it looks interesting and looks like it might be the deal for you somewhere you're going? How many are you buying? Well, that's a loaded question. There's, <laughs> two, two, there's two scenarios. You and have your wife's not listening, I promise. <laughs> no, she, she don't mind. <laughs> uh, the, if it's a bait I can get easily, I'll just buy like two or three. Okay. But if it's something I feel like it's going to be hard to find, I'll buy all of them. Okay. I like that. That's that's a loaded <laughs> question. That's a great answer, though, because I, I get people, you know, I work with Six Sense, obviously, and I get a lot of people send me, hey, Luke, I just made an order, and they'll send, and I just got this Six Sense order. Thanks for showing me these baits or whatever. And they'll, they'll truly have like three crankbaits one of each color that they got and i just immediately give them a hard time and look i know i know some people they ain't gonna spend that kind of money on time i get it but i'm like brother if you like that color you need to get at least two <laughs> yeah because yeah. if, if i buy one of something especially a crankbait the third cast i make i'm gonna get it on that's it right that's right <laughs> yeah i'm ordering a minimum of two but if it's something like you said i'm like that if it's something that's maybe starting to catch fire or something i've caught them on and I think, hey, I might not, you know, some weird color. I might not be able to get these. I'm, I'm loading up on them, man. I got some stuff down here in the shop. You know, them old bulk plastic bags of, of worms that are certain colors, certain places that I've always liked, you know, that I just got a bunch of because I'm scared. Right. You know, I'm scared I'm going to run out. And I know I carry too much crap. But Oh, I definitely do. But, but dude, you, you've always got, you're like that. You're the most dialed guy I know. You know, and, and the record shows it, but then at the same time, you got 20 rods out. I mean, are you throwing all those in a day that you got on the deck? Um, I'd say 70% of the time. Yes. You do you do throw them, or you're trying different things? Yes. Okay, you're never one rod tied, as, as they say. No, I cannot. <laughs> like, my mind won't let me do that. I'm because the, I'm always like that. Be, there'll always be one cast I want to make, and... I may only make one cast with one bait, but if I want to make that cast, I want to make you it. You want to make it. I get it, dude. I'm, I'm, I am, uh, and, and I'm obviously in my fishing career was always a lot more confused, uh, than, than I should have been, but I'm going to have some crap. And my thing is when I'm sitting there like you are right now and I'm rigging tackle, I, I'm coming down to Florida next week to do some filming and fun fishing. I'm going to rig some tackle this afternoon. And man, whenever I, I'm, sitting in the boat i'm like ooh, they might bite that Ooh, even though even after a three-day practice and i'm kind of knowing what i'm gonna do i'm still gonna tie new stuff on i oh, mean that's yeah. just what i've i've always been that way and i think you you're the same way for sure man you've always got a lot of stuff on and, and a lot of people think that's a bad thing but you know they'll say oh you look confused or you got no no i don't think that's i don't think that's it at all i think it's just it's got to match your personality your fishing style has got to match your personality and You've done it well for sure, man. Four. Yeah, it's it's been it's been a good run. I've been blessed. There's no doubt about it. Oh, damn! I don't, I don't know how else. <laughs> oh, no, dude, there, there's you can't put into words. I was reading an article uh, earlier about you, and Dudley said that you can't put into words how good his career's been. And you're a humble dude, uh, and that's what you know. I know people, they love what you and Matt are doing on Let's Talk Fish. I wanted to talk about that a little bit, too. How? Because you're, I'll say this about you, too. You don't like to talk about when you're catching them sometimes. <laughs> like, you can be, and, and rightfully so, because in this day and time, secrets get out, and then those secrets are over with, you know. Yeah, it's, it's not just that, though. It's just, it's fishing, because I know how things change like Quick. the minute you think you're on them 
they'll show you real quick you ain't on them. That's I, I get it. I get that. I get, yeah. The second you go, hey boys, you better. Yeah. You better. Yeah, uh, the minute you say, "Oh, I got this one," you'll show up there. And you won't get a bite. That's exactly right. The ones that I always thought I was going to do good in were the ones that I had the the worst uh, finishes ever. I mean, that was always my deal. Like we had one at Harris Chain one time. I didn't sleep, dude. After the first day of practice, I didn't sleep. Strader's like, what is wrong with you? I said, dude, I think I can win this tournament. I think I can win this tournament. Yeah, I was about 65th. But <laughs> but I truly, like, I, I just, I found things that I liked that were, you know, and big ones, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, this is going to be it. And then the yeah. second day, I took it and ran it on another one of the lakes down there in Harris, and I, and I did it again. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, man, this is going to be my week. This is it. <laughs> and it just, you know, and it just didn't happen. And, and so I think a lot of times uh, that's that's definitely what you're setting yourself up for. But or who are you uh, Who are you rooming with there on the BPT? Are you staying by yourself? Um, no, me and Luke Clawson are staying together. Okay. We've been buddies for, you know, a long time. And we, I'm glad I got the invite and we got to start hanging out again. Well, I, I I didn't. Uh, I didn't realize that. I know you. Uh, you've ran around with JT Kenny a lot, yeah. Mister Commentator. There, he. Uh, are, are you going to get to? Uh, are you going to get to go see JT in Florida when he gets back home after the bench? You going to hang around? Or are you going back to them kiddos? Um, I'm gonna probably roll back to the kiddos, but uh, I did get to go film a show with JT the day before practice. Heck yeah! So Heck we yeah! We planned the day of that beforehand. And it's good. Heck yeah, buddy. Uh, so, quick quick question. So, last year when all the shakeup happened, now you had options, but you're a really loyal guy. Can you talk about, I mean, you could have gone to the Elite Series, but you stuck with FLW and now you've moved on. Uh, I mean, was it just a, was it a loyalty thing or did the, the, the bass, did it just not suit you at the time? What, talk um, about that a little bit because there was, because there's a lot of talk about, why guys left, you know, a lot of guys left fast, went to BPT. FLW's been home for you. You never even fished any opens, but will you talk about that for, for just a minute? Yeah, I'd be glad to. You know, last year when, you know, the BPT was announced and all the shakeups and happened, I'd kind of, well, I'd, I had already, you know, give FLW my word that I was fishing the tour. Mm-hmm. And that was the, the biggest thing. And, you know, I'd, I'd said that to them before I ever got an invite to bass for the major league fishing. So oh, that's right. I forget. That, sorry for cutting you off. You got a BPT invite as well last year. That's right. Yes, I, I forgot about that. Yes. And uh, I just, I couldn't do that to FLW or to myself. You know, I hated to go back on that. That all, but just giving them my word that and I was going to definitely fish the tour. Let's be honest, uh, it worked out. <laughs> it, it, it was a good year. It, 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 it worked out. You won more money you ever won in one year, and you finally got that that cup. And it was and it was how special is it to you? And I and I voiced my opinion. I, I'm frustrated that the Forest Wood Cup's gone because it was such a special event. I feel like in our sport, but yeah. you know, there the, but things are changing, and we all know that. And I've talked about it to death, and everybody else talked about it, but. How special is it to you, though, that you won the last one? I mean, that that's that's, that's got to be awesome. That that is awesome. You know, that was the last trophy Forrest ever gave out. Before awesome man. His passing, you know. And so it's I've got a lot of great memories from that event, just from it being the last one. You know, my both my boys and my wife got to come up on stage with me, and I'm pretty sure Cooper still got confetti stuck in his butt. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. It, I was. It, it was an amazing, amazing event. I can't describe. It. I, I was. Uh, your wife is one of those wives in the sport that, uh, and all of our wives in life deserve more credit, right, for putting up with all of our oh, all, all, all of our mess. But when you get in this tournament fishing world, professional fishing world, you know we're gone a lot. Our our we're moody. <laughs> yeah. You know, depending on if a dang little green fish bites or not. But your wife. Has always been one of the most supportive women out there, and I was at a breakfast that the last day of the cup that that your wife and, and children were at, and watching her and just feverishly, man, checking the updates, trying to see how you were doing. It, it was it was a cool moment, and we were me and, and the friends of mine that were there 
we were talking, Darian was there and we we're talking about just how awesome that is, man, for you guys. Um, that, cause it's a, it, te- is. it is a team. It's not a team sport, but it is, it is. A oh, team. It, it, it definitely is. Like I would, I mean, I, I couldn't do it without her. I promise you that. And I, I tell her all, all the time, you know, if she ever wants me to quit, I'll quit. You know, I'll go get a job just because that's how good of a woman she is. I well, mean, it's, that's, it's, I, I'm happy I for definitely you guys. couldn't do it without her. I know that. Well, I'm happy for you guys. And finally, you got that. Finally, got that cup. You had how many top tens of the cup? Five, six. <laughs> I, I don't know. It was a bunch. Oh, more than that. Yeah. It was a bunch. <laughs> I, think I had and, like six or seven top tens in a row. Yeah, like, it was know. crazy. And I know it was eating at you. And you got it done. So, so now you know, it, it was, but it wasn't because I don't feel like. The, the cup last year at Hamilton was the only one I truly felt like I had a chance to win going into the last Really? That it really is. Like okay. I, the rest of them, I, I felt like I was running out of fish or or something something like that. I mean, something there was, was still going a chance. On. Yeah, there was a chance to win them, but at, at Hamilton, I, I just I had one of those feelings like it was mine to lose. I got you. I got you. So that, that's, and that was just coming out of practice. You were confident. Hey, I think but, I figured out the right right deal. It, it wasn't even out of practice. It was just like I didn't really get that feeling until the second day of the event when I, I got really you. got figured out what I needed to do and where I needed to be. I got you. So this year, talk about new goals. So new new trail, new everything. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing AOI. You want to you want to <laughs> win the championship, right? Or you or are you just right now focused on getting you a, a trophy? What's first? I, right, I'm going to tell you, I, I tell everybody this. My number one goal is to keep the bills paid. As long as I make enough to make a living, I'm happy. So just <laughs> as much in winnings as you can make and uh, and and line that bank account up. That's what you're trying. That's that's the number one goal. I mean, you got to – this is, you know, this this is our job. You know, we're our own bosses. We work for ourselves. And, you know, you got to – you gotta make a living, <laughs> and you, and you gotta work hard and and get what you put you in it, man. You gotta work at it, even if you're Brian Thrift. You get, and I think that's something that I hope people listen to this. And I know y'all listen to Let's Talk Fish, and y'all hear Brian talk a lot, and hear Matt talk. He makes it look easy, but listen, <laughs> this man spends hours and hours and hours working on tackle, hours staring at his electronics, hours out there honing his craft. It don't just happen. He's a natural, no, it's, but uh, it's a lot of work, ain't it? <laughs> I don't even think I'm a natural. I like, think I you like, are. I feel like I have to work a lot harder than everybody else to have the same success. <laughs> I don't know about that, man. I don't know about that. That's uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's it's been it's been awesome to see. I mean, this is a little known fact, and I don't know some of you youngsters that are listening. You may not know this. Brian really, in my opinion, gets credit for breaking the chatterbait onto the scene. <laughs> I, would would you say that's fair? I think it's fair. Uh, I think you're yeah, the one that exposed it. I, I believe it was. <laughs> so when that happened, were you like, dang it? <laughs> no, not really, because that jump started my career. No doubt. That's that's pretty much why I'm, where I'm at today was because of the chatterbait. You know, I, when Ron started the company, and start, he had been making the bait for eight or nine years before I ever won that event with it, kind of. Mainstream, and you know he he was struggling, and you know to push baits that nobody had ever seen before. Let's face it, everybody knows how a bait is that nobody's proven yet. They it's hard to tell. Yeah, you're just gonna stare at it and keep walking. You're not gonna buy four of them, (laughs) right? Exactly. So, so once I won that event down at Okeechobee on the Chatterbait, it uh it took off, and you know Ron was my first paying sponsor the next year. And, I mean, it, it really made life easy coming out of the gate, having a good sponsor to start my career, you know. That way I wasn't, you know, bankrolling my first year on tour out of my own pocket. Which can be scary. It's and, very and, scary. And it's reality scary. for a lot of guys, unfortunately. Yeah. It, it really is, you know. It's, it's tough to tough to make it in this sport. But I think things have come a long ways in the last summer you know, last five or six years with the startup of high school fishing. I mean, kids getting scholarships to go to college, to go fishing. I mean, that that's amazing. And there's a, there's definitely an easier platform to get there than sticking your neck out right out of the gate. 
Well, and, and there's a lot more opportunities for, for kids now to have tournament experience at a young right, age. Exactly. You know, when you I and mean, I were coming up, that wasn't the case at all. No, it, it was not. I mean, there's high school tournaments that have two, three hundred boats. No in, doubt. It's amazing. It's interesting to see. And then with all the YouTube stuff going on, too, which I talk about a lot, I mean, the sport is as, is as good as it's ever been. It's big. You know, a lot of people, and, and not just the tournament side, you know, because a lot of people just want to catch a bass. They don't care about MLF, FLW, bass, whatever. They don't care, you know, and that's right. fine. Go, ha- go, you know, enjoy the sport. Enjoy the sport. But I will say this. If you enjoy catching bass, you better pay attention to what Brian Thrift tells you <laughs> if you want to catch some. If you want to catch more, hey! Before we go, I'm, I'm not going to keep you. Tell the folks where they can find Let's Talk Fish because uh, these are podcast fans and and uh, they need to be supporting all the fishing podcasts. Where can they Where can they find y'all? Um, the best place to look or the, the way to watch it is just go to Facebook and go to Let's Talk Fish Facebook page, and we go live there every uh, Tuesday at eight o'clock, provided we're both in town. So. We average probably thirty show or so shows a year, mm-hmm. so that's that's not too bad. But it's it's pretty fun, you know. It's just Matt, myself, and Jeff Walsh sitting around the table just talking fishing. You know, we, we try to make it make it very one on one, so that you know it's more like everybody's just sitting around hanging out and just talking. And that's one thing we really like about it. Well, and it's interactive. You got comments popping in. Y'all are answering questions. People can actually ask Brian Thrift and Matt Airy whatever they want, and right. uh, you know, within reason, and they'll, and they'll get an answer. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's like a one hour question and answer session with me and Matt. <laughs> me and Matt, I like that. You got that me and Matt shirt. Yeah. And I mean, if you're gonna hang out with somebody, I guess Matt's a pretty good one to hang out with. You know, yeah, I give him a hard right. time. Uh, I got to tell one quick Matt Airy story. I'm going to let you go. And Matt, right. pro- Matt's wife, Emily, will probably kill me for telling this. And my <laughs> wife will too. So my wife, Matt and I, from a distance, kind of look similar with the, with the beard. <laughs> no, I don't see that. Well, dude, I, I've gotten it a bunch, and so has Matt. But the funniest thing, cr- I mean, it almost wasn't funny, but... <laughs> Funniest thing, my wife, my wife's like all women. She's jungle cat crazy. She 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 gets her claws out, you know, you ain't getting my man, that kind of stuff. But <laughs> the funniest thing that that ever happened, dude, on Instagram, on that little discover feed, you hit the search button, you get all the little pictures up there. But it's like, you know, it's like people you may know. I swear, Emily was on there, hugged up with Matt in a bikini, and they're on the beach. And in the little picture, my wife, for two seconds, thought it was me. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> Swear. And she calls me and goes, you can tell Matt Airy, he almost got you killed. <laughs> and I said, what? <laughs> that's pretty good. So, so now that's always been our joke when I see his lovely wife. She's like, hey, hubby number two. I'm like, hey, girl. Y'all give her a hard time. So that's always been our joke. And Marissa gives Matt a hard time. But yeah, in a split second. In a split second, we almost had an investigation discovery dateline situation at my house because of Matt going on vacation with his wife. I don't know what that says about me, but but that that happened uh, with your podcast duo partner there. But, uh, That's pretty. Yeah, good. you had to give him a hard time about that, but that did happen. That did happen. Oh, well, All right. I'll start yeah. Reference to him yes. Luke. Yeah. Just yeah. Me and Luke. Me and Luke. Uh, Thrifty, thank you, buddy. I really appreciate. Uh, you taking the time out of your day to come on and uh, and talk with me here? I know I know the fans will appreciate it. Go get you another top ten, but get you a hundred grand this week. Go get it. I'm gonna try to. Uh, my hopes aren't real high right now, but we're gonna see what happens. Well, I really appreciate it, buddy, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Thank All you. Right, Luke. See you, Brian Thrift. Everybody, Brian Thrift. That was uh, that was a good time. That was a good time. He is uh, Brian is a He's an interesting dude. There's a lot of layers to that guy, and he is very smart, super bass smart, obviously, but he's just a fish catcher, loves, loves, loves fishing, man, and is just, uh, like I said, a, a bait junkie, a fish junkie. He's a fish head. So I know you're all following through it, but make sure you are, and check out uh, their podcast, Let's Talk Fish. They've been doing it, honestly, the same amount of time that I've been doing Low Budget Live. They've been doing Let's Talk Fish, two totally different style shows, but... uh 
good guys. Matt Airy's one of my favorite folks in the industry as well. Fishes over on the Elite Series, fished the tour with me for a long time. Good people. Um, glad that uh, Thrift took time out of his day to uh, to talk with us. Hopefully, by the time you listen to this, he'll be kicking butt and taking names down at Okeechobee. Uh, I want to say thank you. Thank you. I always, I always want to end this way, but I want to say thank you to you guys uh, and gals for listening to Low Budget Live. I really appreciate it. Uh, it's a lot of work putting all this together, the crazy YouTube stuff. I'm watching the subscriber count go up. I'm watching the views go up. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all very much. So make sure, one more time, if you're at that Bassmaster Classic, I better see your face. The first hour of every day, the first hour of every day at the convention, at the expo, myself, Darian is fishing, stupid Darian. We're going to be doing a meetup in the TH Marine booth, TH Marine booth for the first hour. I will be in the Garmin booth every day. I will be in the StarTron booth every day. At 4 p.m. on Saturday at the Bassmaster Classic Expo, I'll be in the StarTron booth playing some music, hanging out, meeting you folks. Uh, and then that night, of course, March 7th, 8 p.m., Low Budget Live, live, Black Market Bar and Grill. Be there. Thank you all so much for everything. We're going to keep this year rolling. We're going to keep content coming. We're going to keep podcasts coming. Boats and pros. Got another idea for another series that I'm going to gonna, gonna start playing around with. The Traveling Circus. Thank you all for everything. Be sure to hug your mama. Here's some Biloxi Blues on the way out. And when I talk to you all next week, I'm going to be sunburned, son. From Jackson Town. White Line Gypsy. Here we go. I never could make it last. Spanish moss or Civil War ghosts. Well, I'm going to leave them in the past. Any direction, Lord, I'll be fine. It don't matter east or west. North, south, wherever the wind blows. I'm leaving those burdens at rest. This highway, it does not know my name and I don't care, no, I don't care. Heading my way for another place, and I got three good tires and a spare. Just a white line gypsy getting out of Mississippi with just enough gas to get there.